it's a great honor to be able to participate in this dialogue today. And um, it's the first time I'm ever participating in a Shell's Powering Progress event. And uh, it's beautifully organized. Thank you very much. I'm a co-founder of an organization called Tusker Transport. Um, we are a rural B2B freight delivery service. Uh, we're based out of a city called Hubli, Karnataka. That's about 400 kilometers away from here. And we're between Bangalore, we have a production center in, in Bangalore, and we have our, actually our operations are in a city called Hubli. Um, you know, my founder, my co-founders and I, we started this company in 2016 um, for no other reason that it seemed to address one of the most truly interesting challenges facing the Indian economy and society at large. Um, it was really about building models around the question, what business paradigms will drive a rural economic renaissance in the near future? Uh, we happened to already be working in an, in an adjacent field at a company we had established some years earlier that was building supply chain tools that capitalize on all the potential that mobile and cloud computing opened up. Through that, we were already focused on rural communities and settings that you could call low resource environments. But we were working on a lot of inventory management challenges. And as advantageous as that was, we knew that the transportation markets, as you went further into the hinterlands, became less organized and service levels really plummeted. Um, supply, ch supply chain visibility could only take us so far. Um, and these weren't even tiny village hamlets. These were small towns. They had thriving markets there, right? Needless to say, you know, services in these communities were, you know, they had an option of two out of three of expensive, unreliable, or slow. They really couldn't have it all, right? So, you know, oftentimes the opportunity cost of them traveling 30 kilometers to a larger town was less than the inconvenience of using one of these existing transport options. So there was like a huge, uh, you know, opportunity cost for them to, you know, use existing transportation uh, services. This had a deeper implication for businesses and would-be enterprises. Uh, we spent a fair amount of time with, say, rural pharmacies and saw that both business proprietors saw that lose margins, but also communities were put at risk because essential commodities uh, were out of stock. I mean, that's a really big deal when you're talking about you know, public good commodities like pharmacies, right? Uh, we know of produce growers from their farm gate who have to pay very high full truck load by, by directional prices um, to access markets, right? And, and we've seen rural retailers lose leverage with their suppliers because they're making decisions based on who will give them the best terms of delivery and not really who's the best, you know, best business to, uh, you know, to have a relationship with. None of this even touches on how these bottlenecks impact rural manufacturing competitiveness. Despite all of these communities, but despite all of these challenges, these communities still had an incredible amount of entrepreneurial energy. Right? without which the huge opportunity that many have perceived in the last mile economy wouldn't even be viable. Like we're seeing all of this action around people talking about last mile logistics, they're talking about all of this, but people wouldn't be excited if they didn't actually see how robust you know, rural entrepreneurship was. It's not like a solution looking for a problem. There's tons of opportunity and people know it. So Tusker approached the opportunity with as if it required both a product platform, a technology product platform, and a large, large uh, network of mobile users to interface with, and an operations team willing to carefully map the contours of the market and iterate solutions that harnessed existing human resource capacities, right? A way for the transport economy to automate its planning, routing, and load optimization. Right? Use fewer trucks for fewer trips where capacity was stretched, and in micro markets where demand wasn't yet realized, it was small but still growing, preclude the need to unsustainably expand commercial vehicle fleets because we're already doing more with less. Uh, we evolved to create mobile app, app interfaces for trans transporters for routing, task assignment, and task auctioning, as well as mobile apps for channel partners and village level entrepreneurs to aggregate business on our platform. Initially, we had challenges convinc convincing, convincing customers to kind of, you know, access transportation in a new way through technology. Um, you're not just going to a corner and saying, hey, can you take my place and like reconciling it within like 10 minutes. You're saying it'll show up in an hour and the delivery will be done tomorrow. But once we won that trust for people, um, 
you know, markets, we've shaped the way the market behavior is, right? Um, it's still a constant challenge, but, and frontier markets do expect more and push for higher service level, levels just like their urban counterparts. We have a number of great experiences about how uh, users have turned into partners. We have one a former customer who went from being a footwear retailer in a small town he was a customer of ours, and that relationship grew into him being a channel partner who leveraged his relationships with the local timber and furniture making business to grow his own you know, channel partner um, practice with us. Uh, and he continues and works with other sectors, and he now makes an income that's probably three times what he was making earlier, right? Uh, without a high level of capital investment. Uh, we took our solution and we intentionally deployed it in like a smaller region. Uh, the northwestern part of the state of Karnataka, but we, you know, we wanted to go like a mile deep and like a foot wide, so to speak. Um, and now we are working on replicating that. We think we've reached a level three years in where we have 30,000 customers, I think we've, we've touched in, in three years, and now we are iterating it to be a very replicable, replicable and scalable solution across regions. Just looking ahead to the future of mobility, I think that um, you know, logistics going to be moving beyond e-commerce and courier logistics and really go into the meat and potatoes of what drives a rural economy, which is like, which is commodities, machinery parts, construction materials, raw, ma you know, raw materials that, that add to rural productivity and manufacturing. And it's going to move away just from like luxury items and, and e-commerce goods. And I think we're likely to see uh, a move towards um, more abstracted systems that automate networks to develop, right? And not just, you know, um, freight matching platforms that say, hey, we've got a platform uh, fulfillment, uh, you know, like transporters and customers. You can see each other now, make a deal, and we'll take a fee from you. No, I think we need to orchestrate the entire fulfillment process. So these are a couple of ways we're looking forward, forward, <laughs> looking forward to the future. All right, thank you, everybody.